All right, welcome to another edition of Tony's Tony's comic book. Uh, well, Tony's bin weekly bin sell, and this week we have a whole lot of them. But we're gonna start it off with a little conversation. Well, now that football's done, I mean, I'm not sure what we're gonna talk about in the in, in between. Yeah, it's uh, it's rough. This is the point in the year where, from a fantasy football season, I need to like commit to memory all the things that I think that I know now because. In just a few short months, it'll be August, and we'll be drafting fantasy football teams, and I will have forgotten so much useful information that uh, that I wish that I knew them. All right, so so we're gonna kick it off with a little discussion today. So I I, I recently raised a kerfuffle on one of the Facebook channels on one of the Facebook groups on Facebook saying, what was the first appearance of Batman in the Silver Age? I have done a little research. In my opinion, for what it's worth, which is absolutely nothing, is the only thing you can go by, you know, as, a, as an actual honest-to-God signpost, is I think everyone more or less agrees that showcase number four was the first Silver Age comic book, right? The first appearance of the Silver Age Flash. That seems to be a fairly static point in people's, you know, opinions. You know, the Silver Age, you know, the ages kind of overlap a little and things like that. While I'm looking through, um, I decided just to do it purely from a chronological age standpoint. What was Batman's first comic book appearance? after um the flat dropped and the only one i could find and i could very easily have missed something but i checked detective comics batman comics and world's finest which were three of his regular appearances was batman number 102 Ooh. which had a published date according to the gcd of 7 17 56 which was a week after showcase number four, I believe. Well, so that's the best I can come up with. Okay, so so saying that that's not true because Batman did not gain the yellow symbol until much later, and the actual argument is, and I have the surprise, I have the cover saved on my machine just to show you. We're basing his first Silver Age appearance on when he turned yellow. Yeah, when when his bat well when he when he did away with all his all his infamous golden age trappings, Detective Comics number two three twenty seven, which came out in nineteen six nineteen like nineteen sixty two, and basically this was the new look for the new look for Batman. It was called it was called the new look for Batman, and basically Batman they did away with. All the stupid, like him getting and the issue before he literally gets kidnapped by aliens. They did away with all the aliens, all the sci fi, all the goofy costuming, all the goofy stuff, and focused entirely on making him a crime fighter. All right, all right, that seems a little late for me. I mean, you're you're into the twelve cent comic prices, and I would have thought that uh, that the Silver Age started towards the end of the ten cent runs, but again. Just my opinion. See, this is where the controversy lies because Batman, uh, honestly, Batman's first Silver Age appearance probably would be Justice League number one because that's when he appeared as in Earth Earth One. Batman first appeared. Let me uh, let me see what the date on that was. I forgot to check Brave and the Bold. <laughs> GCD is great, by the way. I found so much great information on coverless and incomplete comics. Do, do, do. Come on. Oh, that's not right. Great in the bowl. Yeah, what are we looking at? Number, I don't remember I have that one memorized. Number 21? 28. 28, of course. 28. 
Well, that's going to be 1959 was the on sale date. So that's December of 59, according to GCD. So that would put it a little bit after the one that I had put forward, but considerably before the detective comic with the yellow, uh, the when, yellow the, when the yellow, the new look, it wasn't just the yellow logo. It was the fact that, that they turned Batman away from being this crazy goofy thing into an actual crime fighter. That was the big, it, you know, it was a realistic story with, and it pushed him really. I mean, Batman didn't come into his, his silver ageness until the bronze age when he was, in the seventies, when they really made him the modern Dark Knight, Neil Adams yeah. kind of a thing, yeah, yeah, I, I, I could see that. That was um, ironic, though, because that's around the time that they started the television show, which was all about campy Batman, you know. Yeah, it was the bold new look, and it uh -huh. was, and so that's why that, that's why it's always an interesting conversation to say. What was the first Silver Age appearance of Batman? Because, of course, you're going to say Silver Age. You're going to go with Showcase 4. Everybody does. But the reality was it was much later with Detectives Comics numbers 320, 328 because that was when they started the new look of Batman. But wait a minute. I'm going to throw this one out there. What if they hadn't started uh, getting rid of all that uh, comedy schlock? Until 1980, would you argue that that was the first Bat Batman? No, no, they got rid of the schlock before the 80s. Yeah, but what if they hadn't? What if they? Oh. What if that was selling books and they? Oh they kept my God! Batman the, 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 in the, the rainbow the, the, costume until 1983. Would that be Silver Age? No, that would be that would be that would be that wouldn't. Oh my God! If they had not, <laughs> if they had not gone with the bold look, the bold new look was the was the direction that changed. Batman into a more darker night. It definitely did that. Although he was pretty and, dark and and, gold and, and and to settle it, who's who lists him as that issue? I'm sorry. Who what? Who, who's who? Who's who of of the who's who book from back in the eighties? Remember when they did who's who? Who who? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And from Earth Earth two Earth one as being from that issue. Ah, huh, interesting. Have you seen any of the uh, the really, really, really early Golden Age Batmans uh, from like the first, I don't know, dozen or so? I, I, I actually, you can collect them all. They come out in a collection right now and you can buy them all and I have them on the app. That dude was a maniac. He made the Punisher look like a pussycat. And yeah. he like hung some dude by his neck. Yeah, he was violent in the early yeah. Superman. He was he was more of a socialist than he was he was a Superman. Those <laughs> early those early issues, man, they were dark. There was some some vampire story I seem to remember. Man, I hope that dude was actually a vampire because that man straight up murdered his ass. But that was that was the early days of Batman. Silver Age Batman was more characterized. <laughs> as less goofy i mean then then he got into his goofy phase after that and really well, you could argue you could argue his goofy phase was part of the silver age too i mean because the silver age was a little bit lighthearted. well he certainly had to deal with the comics code then too yeah all right so let's get on with talking about the comics that you're selling this week yep starting up tomorrow at eight o'clock so we're first going with Andy Pandy. Now, the reason why I picked this Andy Pandy, make, which makes no sense, is so when I used to, when my kid was first born, I would go to the comic book shop in my, in DC, in Vienna, actually in Vienna, Virginia. And the guy would give me free copies of Andy Pandy for my kid. So I'd give my kid free copies of Andy Pandy. So I always have a heart for Andy Pandy. And I also remember the cartoon. However, if this sells, I'll be surprised. <laughs> Gotta love the panda then. It's everything with the backstory. For me, it was the ducks. So for my kid, it might she might enjoy it because she might remember reading them when she was little. Yeah. Ghostly Tales. There was just a lot of there was some good horror selections out that's going around. And I just picked one that looked had a cool looking cover and said, "Yeah, pick up some cool horror stuff." I mean, these are going to be these are going to be like five dollars, six dollars. I don't know. I can't say yeah. price. This one might 
it might just be a three. I can't remember. It's kind of like shades of the gold mage cover. Yeah. Look to it. Um, yeah, I kind of like the look of it. Next on the list, Brother Voodoo. Is this the first appearance? Of... Yeah, I think the third. Third. I think so. This is an early Blade appearance, and definitely, hopefully, this will go quick. But you can't help but you, you got to get some early Blade appearances. And it's Brother Voodoo. So racist. Um, just some cool Jack Kirby art with Mr. Miracle. You had a whole series of Mr. Miracles up for sale. And I can't stress how cool it is to get original Kirby art. And this leads into next week's topic, which is, which is your favorite DC creation from Jack Kirby? Yep. I haven't, haven't put my brain to that one yet. I'm going to have to think it out. All right. And then and then some good sword and sword and fantasy. You've been a little low on the sword and sword and swords and fantasy stuff lately. So, but a good issue of call, a good a good run of his, you know, another good based off of Coronel of what's his face, the guy that created Conan, Conan's work. So a decent pick. It's a cool cover too. It's just a cool cover. You had a bunch of old Archies, which I was like, I had to feature this because this is an old life with Archie. This is worth, you know, it's not worth a lot, but you can see Archie has not changed much in his 50 years of existence. He's still the same stupid, goofy kid that he was 50 years ago. Uh -huh. The only thing that changes was the outfits. And the car. <laughs> Just a beautiful, gorgeous painted cover. I just, I just, I love this gorgeous painted cover of, of, and so I just had to feature it because it's such a gorgeous. I mean, look at, just look at the detail you can see on this guy right here and just look at that sub, how well it comes across. Just a gorgeous. I still wonder where the, the originals are for some of these things, if they even exist. I mean, they're, I assume they're, they were based off of paintings or something somewhere and, does yeah. somebody have any of them? Are they gone? Or are they? I don't know. But be be kind of curious. Yeah, I haven't done any research on that. It would be cool to see if those exist still. Terry and the Pirates. Some your only Golden Age that I could find on the thing. I picked up the I picked up the boy Golden Age last week, so I was like all happy about that. <laughs> Definitely, you're gonna be you're gonna be seeing me making a decision whether I'm gonna lock, drop a bin on that one or not. Okay, so it's 12 o'clock, The Witching Hour is interesting. While this is a cool-looking cover, the, what made this interesting is this the, this book is actually is high-end horror. If you want to try to buy the reprints of it, it's $50 for the only book that reprints The Witching Hours. They are very what? much... Yeah, the showcase is like 50 bucks. Wow. So, I, I mean, so I was like, yeah, let's talk about it. This has got to be some high-end horror... That if it's selling for that much money, this must be really good horror. They had some some great artists, uh, Neil Adams and Wrightson and uh, uh, Toth and uh, you know guys like that. And yeah. I love the perspective on this cover. You know the the uh, you know the angles and you know looking up and the witch looking down. I just think it's just absolutely magical. Is this a Neil Adams cover? Sorry, say again. Is this a Neil Adams cover? No, I don't think this one is, but a lot of the ones in that run were. Yeah. Yeah, I can't remember who did this one. And then <laughs> the ever popular, they sell faster than you can say go. You got to basically be on watching and you got to be quick because they go fast. Is the Sergeant Furry and his Highland Commandos. Another selection of another wild pile of Sergeant Furry. They, they seem to be your instant sellers. I got a big lot uh that uh, i upgraded from and that's uh that's where these are coming from so uh, they'll, they'll keep coming for a little while longer but it's a nice series because it's uh more or less affordable to pick up the you know number 13 i think and the number one or you know pricey comics but the rest of them are not not terrible yeah and finishing out our book of the week of weirdness is the Watchmen movie? You will be in the who will watches the Watchmen. We we all will be in the Watchmen movies. Comic book interview forty eight. Which yeah, 
it's not Do you like, like that movie. What? Do you like Watchmen? No. Watchmen? Nah, it wasn't that good. <laughs> it was different though. I mean, that was uh yeah. you know, there it was a little bit of a departure from the uh you know the sappy sweet, you know, superhero movies and a little before I think the Marvel stuff really got going. So it was uh, kind of different. It was a lot different. All right. Well, that's our list for this week. Um join us again next week when we when we ask when we ask when we ask what is what is your favorite DC Kirby creation? All right. I'm gonna put some brain power to that one and come up with something. I don't know. I was kind of late to the party on uh, Jack Kirby, so uh I'm gonna have to think about that a little bit. Ah. Uh. We could go for his favorite Marvel creation, but that would just be Thor. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll talk to you later. All right. Take it easy.